Hello everyone. While the main classes from the summer school have finished, we did say we would be producing some more special episodes. And who are we to let you down? Today's class is on should you invest during a recession? As with many things in the investing world, it does depend. But our aim in this video is to make you more equipped to make the decision that is right for you. Before we move on, let's discuss what a recession is and what causes it. Believe it or not, there isn't really an official definition of what a recession is, but the IMF says there is a general recognition that the term refers to a period of decline in economic activity. Very short periods of decline are not considered recessions, but most commentators and analysts use a practical definition of recession as two consecutive quarters of decline in a country's real inflation-adjusted gross domestic product, GDP. That said, the National Bureau of Economic Research, the NBER, is the referee for dating US recessions. So in theory, we could have two negative GDP readings, but not officially be in a recession if the NBER doesn't think we are. Another thing for us to touch upon is what causes a recession and can we predict it? Because if we can safely predict it, as investors, we might be in a better position to get out of investments before they fall in prices. Whilst that would be ideal, unfortunately, it is quite hard to predict a recession. There are various indicators that try to handicap recession risk. Two are provided by the US Federal Reserve System. One looks at the bond market yield curve, an inverted curve with the long-term 10-year bond yields below short-term three-month yields. This implies high recession risk. Another looks at traditional economic data, from employment to personal income and industrial production. However, this is a lagging indicator. A further US Federal Reserve System indicator to gauge recession risk is the Financial Conditions Index. This encompasses everything from equity markets to mortgage rates and company bond performance. When central banks raise interest rates, they naturally tighten these conditions and this slows the economy down. For this chart, a reading above zero has historically been a good warning of a coming recession. Okay, so we've covered the widely accepted definition of a recession and have touched upon the causes, but before we decide whether we would want to invest during one, let's discuss what generally happens to prices of different asset classes as we enter a recession. Historically, equities have performed the worst of major asset classes in recessions, Defensive equities like real estate have done less poorly than the most historically sensitive areas like international stocks. High yield corporate bonds have done better, but weakened along with equities. Investment grade corporate bonds have historically done the best. With this information, as investors, we can potentially maneuver our portfolios throughout an economic cycle if we do believe a recession is soon approaching. For example, if I see economic conditions slow, I might want to take some of my stocks and equity positions off and move into US government bonds, for example, which historically perform better in these scenarios. Before we focus on specific sectors that perform better or worse, let's review some facts about recessions. There have been 11 US recessions since World War II. They last an average of 10 months, peak to trough. They've also been getting shorter. Central banks have gotten better at managing the economy. Every economic recession and resulting equity bear market is different, but all can be scary and driven by fear of the unknown. But history shows economies, companies and consumers are resilient and do eventually recover. The average bear market lasts 19 months and falls 38%. The average bull market, by contrast, lasts four times longer and is four times larger and built on the lower inflation and interest rates that come from a recession. With this information, as longer term investors, we might start to form the view that actually investing during a recession could be rewarding in the future. As a reminder, the long term annual S&P 500 return is 10%. Some investors will save cash to invest in these periods, specifically as they see it as an opportunity to buy at a discount. A famous saying by legendary investor Warren Buffett is, be fearful when others are greedy, and be greedy when others are fearful. If we had invested during the 2020 pandemic, the great financial crisis of 2008, the dot-com bubble of 2001, and the oil shock of the 1970s, yes, timing the low would have been difficult, but the recovery from these recessions 
was a lot bigger and longer lasting. So it begs the question, do we look to dollar or pound cost average or do we look to time the market? Personally, I combine the two in periods of significant drawdown. For the main equity markets like the S&P 500, I would continue to add to my investments every month, regardless of where price is trading. But for every 10% dip lower, I will look to add a larger lump sum in to hopefully and potentially take advantage of the recovery. Remember, history is on our side here. And if you are long term focused and have patience, the chances are you'll be absolutely fine. The pro of trying to time the market perfectly is, of course, if you buy at the lowest prices, you're going to get the highest returns. But as we've said before, doing this is super tricky. If you get it wrong and it continues to go down, you're tied to that price where you bought, whereas someone who averages in can still take advantage of lower prices. If you are someone who has the time to be more active, you can see the benefit from being more proactive in your investments, which we'll soon touch upon again. But if you are working full time and don't have loads of free time to dedicate to your investing, periods of significant drawdown could entice you more than when the stock market keeps making record highs. For those who do want to be a little bit more proactive, what else would be beneficial for us to know? Well, it would be good to know what stocks or sectors struggle most as we enter a recession and what ones perform best when we finish one. Certain sectors perform better at some cycle points than others. Traditional defensives like utilities and healthcare perform better as bear markets start and then on the flip side as the market and economy recovers, technology and consumer discretionary do well. So to keep it simple, it might be that I'm invested in tech stocks like Apple and Microsoft and if a recession is coming, it might be wise for me to take these positions out of my portfolio and maybe move into companies that perform better in this environment. For example, Walmart is considered a recession-proof stock by some analysts as their stores sell items which we will always need, such as food and personal care products, at reasonable prices. However, if we are coming out of a recession and markets start to boom, investors may turn to more luxury brands as people become more expansive with their spending. As we have mentioned throughout the summer school classes, investing decisions will vary person to person based on a few factors such as age, risk appetite, time horizon and financial goals. If I am a short term investor, I am more focused on the current macro environment and trying to work out what markets will do well in certain scenarios. I can take advantage of recent economic releases and changes in the market fundamentals. If I am a longer term focused investor, then I'm not too fussed about shorter term price swings in the market and not necessarily looking to time the market as perfectly as possible, but would rather just be consistently invested and let compound interest do the talking for me. Remember to find your why and trust your process. Be diversified and have patience. You got this. Our next video is going to be about how inflation affects the markets. Now I'm off for a swim, but I'll see you next time.